Jack here from the Washboard Resonators. Just thought I'd do you a, uh, a quick video to tell you what I've actually got on my washboards and why I've got it. So if we go from the top, I've got two whistles here. I've got a siren whistle and a little train whistle. Now these are basically used for comedic effect for us. We've got a couple of songs that kind of hark back to the um, music hall tradition or like silent movie era. We've got some sound effects that go in, so that's what they're on there for really. I've got them attached using a harmonica rack. This is half of it that I've just screwed into the into the washboard. I've got a wood block here because uh, back in the in the pre thirties in the swing stuff, they had they were using wood blocks for for accompanying various backing. So I like to do that as well, like on this lovely vintage drum kit I've got here. There's a wood block part of it, so I like to have one on here because I'm trying to reproduce some of these early drumming sounds basically on my washboard. Now not everyone has a wood block, obviously you could just use the actual wood of the board, but I like I like having the block there. Then going down I've got a finger symbol here. Again, it's just for comedic effect really that, but I I put quite a lot on this board, or as much as I could, but I need the space on the side to be able to play it. Um, some people, if you play it flat on your lap, you can build more stuff around the three sides and you have stuff sticking out so you can fit more on. This is about as much as I can play comfortably on this one, so it's, it's just another effect I can use and have on there. I've got two tins on here, two tin lids. Um, I'll give you a couple of trade secrets about uh, on this board. So there's four probably good tips I can give you. And the first one is this. So I've got these tin lids on, basically just for another metallic sound um, outside of the board. Um, and it just looks, it's an interesting thing, that what Oxo, everyone knows what that is, a bit more of a recognisable one. You can tell I haven't used it much because it hasn't, hasn't worn away like this bottom one. But I've mounted these, I've just nailed them into the board, but there's a little rubber washer underneath it. And that just helps space it out from the board because the actual sound you're hearing is really the thimbles hitting the tin lid and the tin lid hitting the washboard. But that rubber just helps to bounce it and keep that separation. Um, the, this actual washboard, the board itself, I think it's got some kind of copper in it because it's a lot softer and quieter than my last one was. And then, but the last one wore away quicker and, it, uh, and then a big shard came off when I was playing one, which is probably the most rock and roll thing I've ever done on a washboard. But it's a bit of copper or something in it because it's also copperized on the side here where it's actually been used in the past for washing clothes, which is pretty cool. Down the side here I've got a bike horn. <laughs> Just got it off eBay again, Def definitely comedic that, but it was a bit of a pain when I was putting it in its case to check around, so uh, trade secret number two would be that I've got it attached with a pipe clip here, just an ordinary plumbing pipe clip, so you can take it on and off, store it in its case, always useful. Then down here, I've got a, this is a sugar bowl, um, just to have some kind of talent, I've got a sugar bowl and an actual old cowbell I got out in Amsterdam a few years ago here. Now they're just quite nice metallic sounds and rep uh, represent actual cowbells that, um, that some of these pre-30s players used to use and even into the swing era as well. Going across I've got a, um, a cymbal here and everyone mounts the cymbals differently and this is probably one I get asked the most and I'm going to give you trade secret number three here which is the best way i found to attach a cymbal to your washboard is to use the top of a cymbal stand, so where where, it, where you actually tilt it, and if you're, if you're a drummer, you get a cymbal stand where you actually tilt it, you go and screw that. I've just used half of it and bolted this one into the board. That that way, it's uh, you've got the top of cymbal stand, you've still got the washer, and the cymbal can move freely, it's not the wrong way around, you're not keyholing it, it's able to ring as much as it wants, or you can clasp it, like they do in the pre hi hat left. So I can try and replicate that sound basically using that cymbal. Um, then I've got a, just a reception, when it works, a reception bell on the top here, again for comedic effect really, but uh, it's uh, the more stuff I can fit on the better. And finally I'll probably say trade secret number four is actually what thimbles I use. So I, I use four, everyone uses different amounts, some people use gloves, I don't personally like that, and two or four are loud enough for me. Um, and I was experimenting with different ones. I actually found the best ones were the cheapest thimbles I could get because I can bend them to fit my fingers so they don't fall off and then if you lose one you're not having to find exactly the right size to fit your fingers. So um, I'd recommend getting cheap thimbles and bending them. Uh, hopefully that answers any questions. If you've got any questions do uh, put them in the comments below and feel free to subscribe to us and find us on all the places you'd expect with uh, Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. And uh, keep in touch and we'll put some more videos up soon. Take care.